We've been doing marketing the same way since basically marketing was invented. You write down a bunch of words, maybe if you're fans, you record a video, and then you blast it out to a billion people and you hope that it resonates with them. But it doesn't make any sense in this role of interactivity that we have. Like literally, computers react to what we are doing. So why are we still giving everyone the exact same cookie cutter, cookie cutter contents? <laughs> yeah, we know that sales conversations are huge, but you can't talk to anyone. So we see this marketing as this, yeah, it's one thing for everyone. And then there's a sales as this individual thing for everyone to really get them through the sale, the conversion. But now we have AI. So could we make marketing perfectly personalized to every single person. Let's figure it out. Let's make something today. Choo choo baby. So here's my plan. We will make an AI that cold calls everyone again and again and again until they buy our stuff. <laughs> okay, that's maybe a bit too much. We can do that. We can, but I don't think it's that good of an idea. I got something else. customer you want to get them to the space where buying your product or your service is the obvious next step to do but they're not there they're in a different space they probably don't even know what they want or they need and so they have this set of beliefs about themselves about their company about their world about who they are and what they want and we need to get them to this place where buying your stuff is obvious. Now, this isn't a one-step thing, so it goes one step to the next. So if you've never done this before, just stop the video right now and do this. It's called the ladder of beliefs or chain of beliefs. It's an amazing concept I learned, where you think about the final belief when, they, when the sell is obvious, right? It's like, for me, it would be, okay, I really need to change the way my company works I want to make it a calm space. And Marcel's teachings are absolutely the best. It, like I need to have him on my team. Something like that. Okay, what would the prospect need to believe in order to believe that thing? And then you go back and you go back and you go back and go back all the way until where the people are right now. So maybe they start off with believing that, well, I guess running a business is overwhelming. There's always so much stuff, that's just the way life is as an entrepreneur. That might be where people start. And then I need to get them to a place where they really see that, oh no, wait, actually there is a better way of running this. There is a calmer way of doing all this. So anyways, that's for me, but you get the point. You, you need to think about those steps. And if you've never done that, again, pause the video, do it right now, because we're gonna need it later. So what do we want to build now? Well, we want a ball that brings your lead through this process of this chain of beliefs. So I want something that takes the person through this step-by-step -step thing, which by itself is a kind of a challenge because ChatGPT is used to listening to you and doing what you ask it. But in this case, it's the other way around. It's the, the sales rep that needs to lead the conversation. And then, so I need to get to understand them, empathize with them, craft the perfect message for them. And then finally, of course, I want to I want to get in touch with this person. Right? <laughs> maybe actually, maybe you can just have direct fucking Stripe link, and that would work. That would work if you just have a product to sell, or you save them as a lead in your CRM, or you let them make a booking on your Calendly. All of that is possible, and we're gonna do it just in custom GPTs. This is like this is the perfect prototyping ground. It's so easy to set up. It's free, and if later on we want to do something like we want to put it on our website or we want to not have it inside chatgpt.com, which is a bit weird, then actually the backend, the developer side of all this, where you are super free and doing whatever you want, is basically the same thing. So we'll go into that. But let's start now with building that custom chat GPT. How, how do we do it? Let's have a look here. I'm on ChatGPT, so we want to go to Explore GPTs, and then on the top right, there's My GPTs. So these are 
my GPDs. I've got Ava here, which was the one I was building before this. I'll actually share it with you in the description if you want to chat with it, figure it out, try and play around with it and see if it works, basically. So how, uh, how do we do this? If you've never created a GPT, I'll give you a quick rundown. So there's two tabs here, create and configure. Create is basically you maybe in first time you're, you're building something, you want to be in there, but for the rest you just, you don't want to touch it because it's going to change everything all the time and you don't want that. So let's just go to the configure, the real settings. This is what the pros use. Um, well, the sort of pros. I'll get to that. We get name, description, you see that stuff shows up here in, the, in big, and then instructions. This is the big one. This is where I basically put everything. This is where I describe what the bot should do. And we'll go into this. How do you, how do, you do this in this specific case? Because that's really where the magic happens. So then conversation starters. In this case, I just kind of added hi because basically I want the bot to lead the conversation. So I don't want the user to ask anything. So it's just the high is for me the obvious start. You can feel free to add a couple different things. Maybe if in your case, you're doing something where you know that there's two or three different types of prospects and you might have something that pre-fills that for them, one or the other. Oh, maybe like, oh, hi, I'm in this kind of business or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a salesperson or, oh, I'm this kind of, you know, that kind of stuff. Then there's this knowledge thing. This is additional information that GPT can access. Now, why, why is there nothing in here? Because it clearly needs to know stuff. The thing is that the instructions, it knows all the instructions in every conversation. The knowledge, it will figure out when to search for pieces of the knowledge. And so it's literally a search. So it doesn't have the full overview of everything. So if, if your prospect asks something about a specific part of the business, it'll find it. But if you really need the generic stuff, of what are we all about? it shouldn't be in the knowledge. This should be just stuff that the bot always knows. So I like to have a bunch of information in the instructions and then additional information that might need to come up that they might need to search through that I can throw it in the knowledge. So in this case, everything is in the instructions. I can maybe add some of the writing I've done before to the knowledge in case it wants to have some extra information. But I've, the testing I've done, it's actually been pretty, pretty good. Then capabilities, actually, we don't need web browsing. We don't need image generation, just plain old text. And then the last one, action, we'll get to that later. This is where the magic happens of saving the lead information. So if you talk to this bot, it'll actually at some point ask you for your name and your email address and you just type it in and off it goes. It gets sent to me. So <laughs> please don't spam me, okay? <laughs> All right, so that's the overview. Let's dive a little bit deeper into how I built these instructions. Now, one thing you should have if you're using ChatGPT a bunch is this reflex of, oh wait, maybe I should just ask ChatGPT. So <laughs> that's basically what I did here. I let ChatGPT write instructions for itself, which is a weird kind of AI, AI stuff. So uh, this is actually, doesn't really matter at this part. Basically what I did is, I pasted all the writing I had done about this product, this service, everything. This is just my personal notes. I copy pasted it. You see, it's long. It's really long. It's a lot of stuff. You really will know what I'm talking about. I have this chain of beliefs here, if you remember. If you didn't pause it, you pause it now and write this down. You need this. This is important. This helps it. And then more, 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 more. What's actually in the program? Patata, what are we doing? Okay, cool. Um, this is actually from a previous conversation. I asked it, hey, can you design a, design a program in more detail? It doesn't matter here. Okay, here, here, this is the key stuff. I'll put this in the description so you can copy paste everything and it's magic. So basically what I'm asking here is I'm telling you, you're training a virtual assistant. They don't know anything about me. They don't know anything about the company, the product, nothing. And they kind of can do everything, but you need to explain them in a lot of detail. And this is like, this is ChatGPT, or virtual assistant is literally ChatGPT. So that's sort of what I'm writing. You might also need some emotional tricks to make sure they do an excellent job. That also kind of helps. Um, so, and I want this assistant to chat with the users and guide them toward becoming interested in the product, okay? So write out the instructions in full. <laughs> I have no hands, do it all for me, because otherwise it was like, you should talk to your VA about this. No, 
I don't want that, okay? So, I have no way of communicating. I really needed to add this a few times for it to understand. I have no way of communicating with the VA, so there's no back and forth. Just you, the only thing it will see is this piece of text. So, and then I started, this also helps a lot if you tell it what to start with. So I'm like, okay, you start with, you are, and then you make up a name. That's what I told it to do. So it says, okay, you are Ava, a virtual assistant, cool, and this is your goal. Here's some background information, personality. Here's a sales conversation structure. That's great. This is sort of what I want. Again, you can write all of this out by hand. If you have time, Feel f like definitely do it because you will have a much better idea of what the actual sales process or the marketing process should be. That's good. I said, okay, this is good, but it doesn't, like there's not enough information about the product. <laughs> it'll just guide it to some kind of, it'll, it'll start making up shit if I just post that in. So I tell, okay, it's good, but it doesn't know shit about the calm company. So it redid that and it really focused on, okay, what is this calm company stuff really about? Who is target audience? What is the key offerings? Uh, success stories, share examples. Well, I, yeah, okay. It doesn't know them. So basically got that. I copy pasted both of those into the page we saw before, this one in the instructions. So you can see here, you are Ava, the overview, psh, copy paste. And then I have the other one copy pasted below here. And I kind of took the, the last paragraph of both of them and put them below each other here. There you go. And then I made some manual changes, but we'll get to that later. That's basically it. So in your case, because you'll probably have a better idea of, or you already have an idea of how do I want to guide this person, type it in yourself. What I would also suggest to make it even better is just the stuff that you copy pasted, all of it, put it in a knowledge, then it has knowledge and has the capability to search for it. One thing you should know is that if someone is chatting with them and it knows it's a GPT, it might, that person might be able to get the full text content of that knowledge. Just something you should know, Probably it's not an idea. It's not bad because it's just marketing content, right? Let's talk with it. You know, let's have a chat. So hi. Hello, Ava. Are there specific challenges that I would like to discuss? Yeah, um, I'm overwhelmed with all the ops stuff. Let's start being very vague. Let's see what it handles with this. Oh, it's understanding me. Okay. Cool. Three pronged approach. That's interesting. So it is giving me a little bit of value because I asked I asked for that specifically. Like give it a little bit of value going through it. There is this challenge because the this prompting this stuff. There is some challenge in making sure that it's doing the right thing. Isn't sometimes it can get stuck into that value delivery and just asking and diagnosing already it's like no 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 that's the service i'm offering so it, it shouldn't try to do too much you know it shouldn't really get to that point where it's collecting the information and saving that to my crm okay so can you tell me a bit more about your specific operational tasks yeah that's cool uh so let's say that's a situation that's messy yeah so Okay, what can we do specifically? And it gives a few examples of how the Kong company could be able to help. Cool, this is really cool. And at this point, it's actually asking me, we can arrange a consultation. That sounds cool. Let's go for it, let's do it. Okay, so it's asking me for first name, last name, email address. I will not give you my normal email address. You can spam this Gmail stuff. I don't look at it. <laughs> so now you see starting action. That's a little bit of magic. So I don't need to confirm this here. That's mainly because we are in this custom GPTs and it's not the back end where you have everything under control. So, okay, consultation is scheduled. So it is making that stuff up. That's again, another thing where you really need to pay attention to how do you like, I didn't talk about consultations. Uh, I think this, oh, let's actually look. Consultation. Okay, so there is. Encourage them to sign up for a consultation or a trial of the services. So it is It is in the actual instructions, but it says that the consultation schedule, which is not the case. So these are things that you, like you can only really find it through testing. 
So you need to test it a lot and a lot and see what things it makes up. And then you need to add that to the instructions to prevent that from happening. So in this case, I see that, okay, consultation schedule, I should tell it, don't pretend the consultation is scheduled. Just the lead information is saved and someone will get in touch. So you'll receive an email shortly with all the details. So that's great. If I go back to my CRM now, okay, so let's look here. Marcel, this is the one. There we go. So it created this lead in my CRM. So now it did miss on something, which I now know that I will need to add this to the instructions. I have another field in this action, we'll get to, we'll get to it, where I want it to describe what the conversation it had. Because otherwise I just get it and I need to ask everything again. So I want GPT to summarize the whole conversation. So when I'm taking over and the human is taking over, they actually know what this stuff is about. So if you look here in this debugging information, it just has first name, last name, email. There you go. So that's it. There's, there's no, there's not more. So it actually needs to fill in the notes. So I'll need to add that to the instructions. So, so, so how did it do that? What, what's happening here? So there's a bit happening in the background. Here's a, here's a rough overview. I have an automation on make.com specifically, where it is a webhook. A webhook means it's a website page, it's a link basically, and anyone, you can send data through it. And then it does something in the automation. I've set up the automation to create a lead in my CRM. All right. Then what I've done is I've told this custom chat GPT about this webhook. So I taught it how to send data to the webhook. And then in the instructions, you see here at the top, I tell your goal is to have a conversation and at the end, collect the name and email and save the lead information, save lead operation. I, I define it very specifically so that it really knows what it's talking about. So if I go here, actions, I click this. And now this is a whole bunch of stuff. This is called a schema. It's the code. You can look it up. I, I can't explain you everything because I don't know what level you are at. I'm not the chatbot, you know, <laughs> ask the chatbot how this works. Uh, so they can customize specifically for you. But basically I tell it, okay, this is the URL. This is what you need to do. There's this operation ID, save lead. What it does, it saves a lead. It requires the lead's data. And then it's at the bottom, I define it. So there's a first name, there's a last name, there's an email and there's a note. So I said required first name email actually. So I, I would still want to add notes. So I'm forcing it to fill in the note. That way it will remember it for the next time. This is a required thing. This is it, I'll, I'll copy paste this for you so you can just adapt it to your examples. Basically, what I did, I had a different example that I found on the OpenAI examples. I can, okay, create a, create a variation of this stuff. In my case, this is the URL, the data structure is lead, has a first name, email, and notes. There we go, and then it just, it popped out, and then I copy pasted it into the thing. So again, just ask ChatGPT to do all this stuff for you. It's amazing. It's amazing. All right, so the next step, let's go to make.com. So if you've never seen this, this is make, it's just, this is amazing. Automations, they make such a big difference in the business because so many people are doing so many simple stuff like copy pasting information from one place to another or something like this. Someone fills in the form on the website, they need to go into the CRM. If you are typing all that over by hand, you're wasting so much time and it's so easy to automate it. So this is like a, this is a way to build these little tiny pieces of software that you don't really have to code. So it's relatively easy to build. It's kind of easy to just look at it. Other people can modify it. So I have a lot of experience actual writing code. So for me, it would be maybe a little bit easier to write the actual code, but this is nice and organized. Other people in the business can sort of understand what's going on there. You see, it's all managing the stuff. You see, oh, there's a lot there. There's not a lot here. So it's all really nice. And so in this case, I created the starting point. So this is a trigger. This is when it starts webhook. So this is the same link we had before. That's, that's the thing. So it's coming in here. And then I'm basically doing whatever I need to do. In my case, capsule CRM, I needed to create a party, which is a person. I need to create an opportunity. I need to create a task to follow up with it. And I need to create an entry, which is the note. That's it. I'm not going to go too deep into this specific automation stuff because I don't feel like that's the, the core of this, of this thing. But you get the idea of webhook 
to save the lead data. You'll be able to find other tutorials on that, or maybe I'll make it at one point if you put in the comments if you're like, Marcel, I need more details. Um, so yeah, that's it. And as you saw in this conversation, it actually works pretty well. And this is even with just relatively little information. And the information is generated by ChatGPT. Like, I didn't write this stuff. I just plopped in whatever I had written before. So it's, it's absolutely amazing what this can do. So how do you get this to people? Now, of course, this is in ChatGPT. So it's kind of weird to have people go to ChatGPT to have a sales conversation. So ideally, you want this to be a sort of a widget on your website, right? A little chat bubble and they click it and then they start this conversation. Now, that's where it gets a little bit more complicated because you need to leave this entire interface. And you need to go to the OpenAI platform. So I can go to the OpenAI platform here. This is a developer side. But if you look here on the left side, there's assistance. This is the same thing. There's a name, there's instructions, there's a model. You see all this stuff on or off, there's files, it's the same thing. And so, but this is where you as a developer can interact with it. And so then you just add that little UI thing to it. So you have the conversation. Now, people have been making this integrations, but they're kind of wonky and there's just too much moving pieces to my liking. So. Actually, I'm not sure. I'll continue searching for it. If you found a good solution, please let me know. But I'm thinking of just building it myself because at this point, it's just everything that's out there is it's just too much. I just want a simple chat widget that can I can copy paste the little link to it and then it works. That's what I want to do. But it's not there right now, so that's what I'll probably be building. <laughs> let me know if you want to know anything about that or if you found another good solution. Uh, yeah, this is that's it, man. Like, it's crazy. We're literally at the point where we can have marketing tailored to every single person. That's wild. And if you saw how we built this in such a short amount of time, share your stuff with me. I, I want to see it. I want to see what you come up with. If you have more tips for the other people, like I shared a few of the little more really deep prompt engineering stuff. That's super interesting. I, I want to hear that from you. And yeah, like, please let me know that you like this stuff so I know what kind of videos to make. And if you need my help on building this or something like it or the automation stuff, we've sort of talked about that as we go. That's the kind of stuff I do. So get in touch with me, talk to the bot, <laughs> get your data saved, and then we'll see each other. So thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, everything, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.